Hey, 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 today is World Book Day. Yes, books. I love books. Hopefully you love books too. So since it's World Book Day, do you have a book or two that you're going to kind of be curling up with later on today? Or are you someone who's like, ah, books, I hate reading, but I doubt it because I would highly doubt that if you don't read books, you actually watch The Daily Dope. But regardless, I do want to say on World Book Day, The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Jeff McAleer once again, and I am your host here at The Daily Dope, as well as happening to be the grand poobah of thegaminggang.com. And I've got the kitties down here with me today. And look who's right on my lap right now. It's good old Smokey. Hello, Smokey. Come on, relax. Just because I'm talking doesn't mean you have to go jumping off someplace. Just lay down, kiddo. Anyway, hey, welcome aboard. If this is your first time visiting, feel free, kick back and relax. This is a very, very casual show. Uh, And of course, if you watch regularly, thank you for watching. So today is Monday, April 23rd. Pretty crazy weekend this weekend. Actually got a little bit of gaming in, so that was pretty cool. Did a lot of RPG reading which was pretty cool as well. And uh, yeah, sorry, I keep looking down because Smokey seems like she's on the verge. She's just jumping off as a big clump of her hair goes floating past. Yeah, kiddo. Oh, now it's all over my nose. What's wrong with you? Hmm? Do you have to shed right this second? Anywho, so a pretty good weekend. And then, of course, last night was the season two premiere of Westworld. Wow, pretty bizarre. It's That show is just going to keep you guessing constantly, I can see already. Hopefully they don't uh, kind of replay a lot of the uh, changes in time as they did last season. Kind of, Kind of had that vibe last night that they were going to kind of pull that again. I'm like, okay, that's been done. Let's not do that again. Anyway, still a pretty good episode, though. All right, anyway, I've got quite a bit of news today, and I am also going to be taking a look at the second edition of Block by Block from Out of Order Games. It is not out yet. It is going to be coming to Kickstarter in May, but I've got a first look. So we will take a peek at that in just a bit. So let's get on to the news, because Stronghold Games has two new titles which are on the horizon And they have started pre-orders for both, get ready for it, Memo R and Steamrollers. Here's the dope. Hate memory games? You'll love this one, Memo R. Different strategy levels change this game from a nice, light family game that you can play with your kids to a more challenging one. The game is nicely themed through treasure chests and adorable sea creatures that grant you powers. You need some recollection and a bit of pirate luck to win it. Memo R. I don't know. Are pirates lucky? I thought most pirates were hunted down and uh, I don't think they're all that lucky then. Anyway, Memo R. You flipped the wrong card. To play Memo R, two to four players need the power of recollection and, as previously mentioned, the luck of pirates. Only then can they make their escape from the island of Captain Goldfish, their pockets lined with rubies, before the lava swallows them up. In turn order, players reveal locations that are connected via animals or landscape to the most recently revealed location. If you reveal a location without any connection, you're out of the round. The last remaining pirate grabs one of the valuable treasures. Then all revealed locations are turned face down before the search can start afresh. Advanced rules enable players to use the special powers of the animals, which are triggered when a connected location is revealed. 
making Memo R exciting for the young and for experienced gamers. Memo R is for two to four players, ages eight and up, takes about 10 to 20 minutes to play, and will carry an MSRP of $19.95. And then there is Steam Rollers. Roll and write games are the rage, and this is one of the hottest gaming mechanics right now. And we now have a pre-order on the most amazing one of these, Steam Rollers. We've taken the strategy and theme of a traditional train game, but added the modern roll and write mechanic, allowing you to finish the game within 30 to 45 minutes so you're ready to play again. Steam Rollers is Age of Steam meets a modern roll and write style game. If you're, uh, I should say, you are a U.S. railroad baron not long after the Civil War. Private investors are betting heavily on this new industry and building railways all over America. Use the dice to build a network of railways, improve your steam engines, and grab the most profitable delivery contracts before your opponents. Be faster and more efficient. Become the greatest railroad baron. Steamrollers is a very fast-paced roll-and-write train game with great replayability. It's for 1-5 to five players, ages 10 and up, and plays in around 30 minutes. And Steamrollers will carry an MSRP of $49.95. I do believe these two games might be arriving in May? Late May? Not positive, but I do know that Stronghold Games has just opened pre-orders for both titles. Interesting. Yes, so not only is it dry down here in the duct tape studios, but once uh, Smokey sits on my lap, then it's like suddenly there's just little balls of hair floating around. So it's like, yeah, all righty. All right, moving right along. North Star Games has a family title set for a Gen Con release, and I have just a wee bit of news about Most Wanted which I believe is a card game with kind of a poker theme to it. Most Wanted is a Western-themed game where you are competing to become the most notorious outlaw. As you become more notorious, you will need an increasing amount of bail money for when your well-thought-out plans go wrong. First player to get an unlucky 13 points has the dubious honor of winning. Go get him, Pabna! Most Wanted is a poker-style game which plays equally well with two to eight players. It takes about 15 minutes to play with two players and around 30 minutes to play with eight. There are seven actions in the standard game, but five other actions are included in the box for when players are ready to spice things up. The game is for ages 10 and up and plays in, as mentioned, about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the player count. There is no MSRP yet, but I do understand that this will be a Gen Con release. I'm going to take a stab. We're probably going to see the price fall somewhere between maybe a $25 and $30 range. Of course, as I mentioned, details are pretty slim about the game right now, which is kind of unusual for North Star because they usually give us quite a bit of info uh, ahead of time about their game releases. But... Once I know more about Most Wanted, I will certainly share it. All right, there is an interesting game coming from Lucky Duck Games. Not a, uh, not, a, not a company that I'm overly familiar with, but they do have a kind of mashup between VR and board gaming, which is coming soon. And it's called Chronicles of Crime. With the same physical components, players will be able to play plenty of different cases and scenarios and solve many different crime stories. You'll start with the app, choose the scenario you want to play, and follow the story. The goal being to catch the killer of the case they've been given in the shortest time possible. Of course, they say shortest short time. I'm not sure what shortest short time would be. But I do have the impression Lucky Duck is not a U.S. company. Anyway, using the scan and play technology, each component, locations, characters, items, etc. have a unique QR code, which, depending on the scenario selected, 
will activate and trigger different clues and stories. That means players will be able to get new stories way after the game is released simply by downloading the app's updates, without any shipping of new physical components involved. The VR experience only requires a mobile phone. Players simply put on the VR glasses provided inside the game onto their mobile device. Put your VR glasses on your nose, holding the mobile device in front of your eyes, and immerse yourself in the game's universe and search for clues in a virtual world. Each session lasts around an hour to an hour and a half, and many scenarios are connected to others in order to tell a much bigger story. Chronicle of Crime is for 1-4 players ages 14 and up, and as I mentioned a second ago, will play in about 60 to 90 minutes. The game carries an MSRP of $39, and it has a planned release in late Q4. And when I say late Q4, I do believe we're talking about probably December. Because I believe December is when the Kickstarter backers are going to receive their copies. The, um, the Kickstarter actually rose almost $800,000 for Lucky Duck Games. So it does look interesting. If you, if you take a peek at the uh, Kickstarter, uh, there are some aspects that look kind of neat. I'm still not sold on these board games that require the use of an app. Just, uh, just don't dig it. Plus, you know, they can say that they're going to have new content, that you'll have new uh, various scenarios available, but who's to say they will release those after the game launches in Q4? Don't know. Just have to take their word for it. All right, moving right along, the latest expansion for the second edition of Mansions of Madness is now available from Fantasy Flight Games. And I've got the dope on Sanctum of Twilight. Searchers after horror haunt strange, far places, but the true epicure of the terrible, to whom a new thrill of unutterable ghastliness is the chief end and justification of existence esteem most of all the ancient, lonely farmhouses of backwoods New England. It's from the picture in the house from H.P. Lovecraft, which, on a side note, is actually one of my favorite, really bizarre, creepy tales from Lovecraft. And it's a, it's a pretty short story. Anywho, back to uh, the expansion. In Sanctum of Twilight, two to five players take on the roles of Arkham's bravest investigators as they prepare to stand against the Order of the Silver Twilight in two digital scenarios that feature new map tiles to explore, a new monster to fight, and two new characters to embody. This expansion unites allies from Arkham's own backyard and across the globe with the introduction of Charlie Kane and Lily Chen. Kane is one of the city's most trusted politicians, using his natural charisma to draw strength. While he's within range of a person, Charlie Kane may convert an investigation result to a success once per test. Meanwhile, Lily Chen may not be the most social investigator, indeed she rarely speaks at all, but her skills in unarmed combat are unmatched. While Lily is attacking unarmed, she deals two additional damage any time that a monster would suffer at least one damage. Whether trained in the art of negotiation or combat, it will require every ounce of both these investigators' skills to bring the Order's plots to light. Of course, you do need the core game, as this is an expansion, but Mansions of Madness Sanctum of Twilight is for one to five players, ages 14 and up, and plays in around two to three hours. The MSRP of the expansion is $29.95, and it is currently out in stores right now. So I have to laugh because one of the new investigators is effectively Charles Foster Kane from Citizen Kane, Charlie Kane. And if you look, if you take a close look at the artwork, it does look like Charles Foster Kane as portrayed by Orson Welles late in the film. I thought that was pretty wild, kind of bizarre. Anyway, uh, Mansions of Madness is pretty cool. I have not played the second edition where it utilizes the app, but I did dig the, uh, the first edition, and in fact, I had actually painted all of my best friend Elliot Miller's figures when I lived in Arizona 
he he just simply sh- uh, shipped to me his minis. I painted the ones I had for the game and shipped them to him. So yes, for a long time he had the uh, kind of a one of a kind Mansions of Madness. Ah yes. So as I mentioned, the kitties are down here, and Pinky uh, Pinky sneezing now. What's wrong, Pinko? You all right? Ah uh, now. Must be all your hair floating around down here, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, and I should point out, pre-orders for Vampire the Masquerade, 5th edition, will begin this coming Saturday. And I've got the dope from White Wolf and Modifius Entertainment. White Wolf Publishing, Craters, not Craters, duh. Hang on, need a sip here. You're right, Pinko. It is very dry down here. Anyway, as I was starting to say, White Wolf Publishing, creators of the World of Darkness and Vampire the Masquerade, is partnering with Modifius Entertainment to distribute Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, otherwise known as V5, worldwide in English. Vampire the Masquerade, the classic that changed role-playing games forever. Mm, Their words. I guess we could say it did change RPGs, but not necessarily for the better. <laughs> Returns in a fifth edition. V5 features a streamlined and modern rules design, beautiful new full color art, and a rich story experience for new and returning players. Powered by the innovative hunger cycle, the game also includes rules for creating system supported character coteries. Lore sheets to directly involve players with their favorite parts of the setting, and Memoriam, a new way to bring the characters' detailed backgrounds and expand on them in session. V5 is a return to Vampire's original vision, moving boldly into the 21st century. While the rules have been redesigned, this new edition honors the deep story of the original, advancing the meta plot from where it left off, and detailing exactly what has happened in the world of the Kindred up until tonight. Wow, until tonight, right now, as in, as in tonight? The terror of the Second Inquisition, the conspiracies behind the Gehenna War, and the rekindling of the War of Ages, these are the building blocks of the modern V5 Chronicle. The ultimate game of personal and political horror role-playing, Vampire the Masquerade will see its fifth edition this year, with the pre-order period starting at, I do believe, 12 noon GMT on Saturday, April 28th. The V5 pre-order will start shipping in August with the first release, the core book, to be available in stores in September. Two more V5 books will be released later in the fall, the Camarilla and the Anarch setting books. V5 will also be available in other languages by the end of the year. There is no MSRP info yet, but I am guessing we're probably looking at about $60 for the hardcover core book. That is a stab in the dark, but I kind of get that vibe. And we're probably looking at between 50 and 60 bucks, probably closer to 60. Anywho, I should say that I believe this is just my opinion. I believe fifth edition of Vampire the Masquerade is going to divide the vampire fan base and folks are either going to really dig it or they are going to despise it and the reason why is i do believe rumors have been kind of floating around i've sort of heard through the grapevine that a lot of folks who are playtesting or who had been playtesting the game were not digging the fact that now the characters, the player characters are really villainous. They are monstrous doing monstrous things and some folks are not digging that aspect that they felt hey, you know, they enjoyed the whole hey, I can I can play kind of like Anne Rice sort of vampires in this game I don't have to be really like evil, evil. That is not how it's kind of sounding. And to be honest, I heard one of the playtest 
characters is a pedophile. Blew, what? Hmm. I don't know. Now, Ken Heights is kind of like lead design on it. He does good stuff, does good work. I don't know. I'm just, like I said, I'm kinda, I kind of get an impression that some folks are going to be like, wow, I really dig this dark, dark tone to the game. And other people are going to be like, ooh, I don't know. This, this is maybe not going in a direction I want to role play. So who knows? I do not know. Hopefully I'll get a chance to take a peek at the core book when it comes out. I'm assuming we will see some copies at Gen Con. All right, so that is it for the news today. And uh, I am going to dig into block by block second edition in just a moment. But I do want to say that uh, coming up this week, tomorrow, oh, I have to go grab this and pick it up again. And this thing is just really heavy. And I keep sitting here thinking, oh, I'm going to drop this and knock over my Game of Thrones coffee cup and bust it. So I got to be careful. So tomorrow I'm going to review Thunderstone Quest from my friends over at Alderac Entertainment Group. So that's what's coming up on Tuesday. Wednesday, still up in the air. There may not even be a show on Wednesday because uh, it's kind of up in the air that I may need to go over to my brothers and keep an eye on the kids so that is a possibility. I will know more tomorrow. If not, I might just uh, might take a look at a classic game. Maybe try to bust out a, kind of a classic conflict game, conflict simulation, something like that, to take a peek at for War Game Wednesday. Thursday, I've got a treat. I've got yet another Kickstarter advanced preview. This time, it is going to be the Savage Seas of Naewon which is part of the uh, Lankmar collection for Savage Worlds from Pinnacle Entertainment. And the fine folks at Pinnacle were kind enough to send me a preview PDF. And that is something that's going to be on Kickstarter. I believe it's going to run May 1st. I think it's a short Kickstarter. I think it's only a couple of weeks. So I will be talking about that. And then on Friday, I will review... I uh, finally review of Dreams and Shadows from Greenbrier Games. Yes, I know Fridays are usually family-friendly or family-fun Fridays, but it doesn't have to always be kind of family games, especially when I don't have a lot of family games available or I haven't, uh, haven't played them enough, the ones that I have available to me, to do a review yet. All right, so moving right along, just so you know, there is chat available. I always forget to mention that at the beginning of the show. So if you are watching live and you have questions about block by block, feel free, chime in. If you want to say hello, that's great too. I will uh, kind of keep an eye on chat. So if you do say hello, that you're not sitting there waiting like 20 minutes for me to respond. Anyway, so I am going to be taking a look at the new edition of Block by Block, the Insurrection Game, which is from Out of Order Games. It's designed by R.D. Lee and T.L. Simons, with art by T.L. Simons. The game is for two to four players, and it usually takes about two to three hours to play. Now, this new edition is going to be hitting Kickstarter on May 15th, so the box I have is going to look a bit different. I do believe that... Uh, the image that I'm sharing right now, which is the cover of the rules for the second edition, uh, I believe this will actually be the uh, box cover as well. So let's switch on over to the other camera. So I received, it's, it's pretty much kind of just a black box here, and I have not peeked inside it just yet. Now, the original block by block kind of flew under people's radar, radars. It is uh, like... Like it says, the insurrection game, where each player actually is going to be leading a faction, and these factions are trying to overthrow this corrupt government. So, and it, it's, uh, there's a few different ways to play. There's a semi-co-op, there's a co-op. So, I understand that some things have been streamlined in the game, as well as... Uh, 
some changes to how the game plays as well. So, whoops. So as we can see, there's some Velcro on this box here. All right, so that was something for me here. I'll put that off to the side. So as I, as I mentioned, that's the artwork for the new cover. A uh, little bit of a change in the uh, in the artwork. A little bit of a change in the style and kind of vibe from the artwork. So here it's like, yay, they're waving a flag. We're wow, we're successful. We've done it. Whereas the original game, the, the cover art is a little more uh, kind of in your face. So one thing I do have to point out is with block by block, the artwork are these like block people. So even though it's kind of taking on a pretty serious subject, it is, uh, you can kind of sit there and say, oh, well, it's just like these block folks, right? It's not like real people. So it says, greetings, comrades. Wait, wait, what? What is this, some kind of communist game? What the? So it's talking about the setup for four players, three players, as well as two players. So you're going to have these different tiles that actually make up the city, the neighborhoods. So it's talking about creating the city, showing the different tiles, talking about the different cards. Uh, I do believe that uh, there's a new deck of cards for this second edition that have been added into the mix as well. So it says gameplay overview. We have the workers, prisoners, neighbors, students versus the state. Talks about the object of the game, daytime and nighttime. Because uh, the police will actually come and raid and try to uh, try to actually uh, capture some of the different factions, some of the members of the factions. So it's showing a district guide about the streets, highways, and the metro. Gameplay at night. So you're going to roll action dice. You're going to take your actions. So there's movement. There's creating barricades. There's cl You can clash with the police. Talking about a reaction roll. Loot, exchanging loot with other players. Build occupation, swap occupation, stop another faction's advanced action. So as I mentioned before, there's a co-op version and then there's a semi-co-op where, of course, each of the factions are looking to overthrow the government, but they're looking to make sure that their uh, objectives are met as opposed to, and you can kind of try to stop your uh, fellow uh, insurrectionists, I guess we'll say, from being able to complete their objectives. I was talking about type of occupations, special abilities. So this game is pretty meaty. I'll be the first one to point out, this is a pretty meaty game. This is not uh, uh, just a read through the rules, jump on in, as you can tell, we've got about 20 pages of rules here. So we've got the attack actions, got the riot cops, riot vans, more nighttime, the police have their operations. Then there's a, a police morale, which is a little bit different. There, uh, in the first edition, there really wasn't police morale. So actually, uh, as you're, you're kind of beating up on the riot cops and things like that, the police morale can drop so it can actually have an effect on them. And we've got police operation cards, maneuver cards. And we got the sunrise phase, police attack, liberating the districts, advancing the countdown, and checking for end game conditions. We're showing a component list here. And got a little bit of a player aid on the back. So it talks about the faction agendas as well as the police operations. So there is a new kind of uh, like pad, which is, this is actually fabric. I kind of have 
a feeling. I don't know if it's going to be fabric for this or if it's going to be sort of like mouse pad material. I don't know. So you're actually going to be able to fold this out and lay it out like so. So a little bigger than uh, I was kind of expecting. So this is about the, it's about the top half. So let's move this over a little bit more so I can pull this over so you can kind of see the sides. So you also have the countdown. So really, uh, all in all, it's like 10 days. So as we can see, it starts off with 10, drops all the way down to one. So that is this here. So let's see what else we've got. It's like player aids for each of the four players. Yep. I'm talking about nighttime, sunrise, actions, your action dice, reaction rolls. So these are the workers. I'm talking about the workers there. These are the students. Kind of get a kick out of the artwork. <laughs> kind, of, kind of funny. See the workers here. Yeah, yeah, take a look at that. Yeah. Then we've got the neighbors. And then we also have the prisoners. I don't remember them being called prisoners in the first edition. I might be wrong. I do not know. It's been quite a while since I've played. And then we've got these are the tiles for the different districts. So we see here, this is a highway on this side. It says no stopping. It's a financial district. So we've got uh, just side for the regular district itself and then flip it over. I believe if you've liberated it, let's double check this. Telecom Network Hub. Yep, liberated, right? So we see that is unliberated. This is where the state still occupies it. And that is liberated. And I can tell um, this is really, I, this is just a preview copy, right? So keep in mind, these uh, look like stickers that have been kind of added on to cardboard here or something with adhesive. So they're not exactly perfectly squared off. Got the airport. So what you'll end up doing on this is you're going to see that you'll have these different districts kind of connect on this grid. Got the projects, junior college, detention center, immigrant detection center, detention center. Oh yeah, that's good. Smartphone factory. So these are specifically tied into the groups here. When we see that they've got a color coding. Supermax prison, global shipping and receiving, garment sweatshop, overcrowded jail, underfunded high school, polluted slum. And we've got privatized university. So various gentrifying residential zones. So each one of these has three. Each of the factions have three districts that are actually really their districts. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, a lot of this is random, uh, random placement. All right, so that's kind of give you an idea on the various different districts. Then we've got the action tokens for each of the factions. So these are the prisoners. And you'll get three of these tokens. Then you've, we've got some uh, some cubes here as well. So we've got that for each of these. Let's go up the prisoners, the workers, the neighbors, and the students. Then we got the police. 
As you can see, there's even a police van here. So we've got that. We've got our dice. I'm taking a guess. This might be the marker for our turn. This looks like this is probably uh, the marker for the police morale. See how it's got kind of a like a rectangle there. So that might be that. Then again, this might be uh, this might be what we use for the countdown. All right, so we've got some various decks of cards. Well, we still had some more districts too. Just a uh, commercial district and some more highway districts. Then we've got some counters, some markers. So I believe these represent barricades. I think these are barricades that you would put up in the districts there. I believe this is, uh, yeah, give me the loot, looting. I think this means uh, that area is on fire. So. Yep, because the people have risen up in revolt. So then we've got this deck here. These are your agendas. So each player is going to receive an agenda card. We got eight. Yep, we got eight agendas. So they're all going to be different. So these are going to be kind of secret. Because as I mentioned before, we are taught, we're looking at um, like the semi-co-op. Remember, you have your own agenda. So we've got win alone, win together. It just basically says two choices, win alone and win together. But it also has a little bit of different text down here telling us what that means. So we've got vanguardists, nihilists, social, 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 social. So we've got that. Got the manifestation. Got the manifestation cards. Chain of command collapse, disrupted police communications, guerrilla gardens. Youth walkouts, general assembly. So this is a, if this liberated district is a public district, do not move the countdown marker forward tonight. So there, if we notice down at the bottom, of these cards kind of talks about the timing. What's going on with the timing of the game for the countdown for each of these different cards? And I believe that you need to pretty much have uh, liberated the city before the final final day, before the final turn ends. And we've got police operations. So we've got different cards for what are the police doing? Check these up a little bit. Riot cop movement in the neighbors' districts. Police have uh, chief of police fired, metro lockdown, emergency reinforcements, maneuvers, SWAT raids, geez, paramilitary operations, state districts, public districts, worker districts, prisoner districts. So that basically is where are the police really focusing on in that term? And then we've got the loot deck. Got a deck of loot cards. So quite a lot in the game. The original uh, block by block was kickstarted. And this new edition, of course, like I mentioned, I believe it's coming to Kickstarter on May 15th. One thing that I thought is very cool for this second edition is that Out of Order Games is actually going to produce an update uh, kind of set for those who already have the first edition of Block by Block. So they don't have to pledge support for an all-new game when they already have the first edition. So it's going to include 
the uh, the materials that have changed some stickers, I believe, to change some stuff as well. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was very nice of the team out at uh, from out of order to uh, be putting together an update package for those who already have the first edition. Well, let me grab a quick sip here. So some of the different loot, sound system, helmets, fire extinguisher, gas mask. There's going to be Molotov cocktails, fancy clothes, charter bus, old tires. Those burn pretty well, right? Furniture, groceries, tools. There you go. There's the Molotovs, the Molotov cocktails. Quite a lot of those. My gosh, there's tons of those. So, of course, you would shuffle these on up. Some of the really cool stuff, like the sound system, there's only one. Whereas the Molotov cocktails, there are quite a few cards for that. All right, so we've got the uh, the loot deck, the police operations deck. Oh, that's it. That's all that's in the box there. All right, police operations, the manifestations. I I could I I want to say that I think this is a new deck. This is the new deck because I, I don't don't recall off the top of my head there being a police operations deck. No, I, I should say, I believe there was a police operations deck in the original uh, edition. So I think the manifestation deck is something that's new. Might be wrong. I'm not sure. I know there were the agendas. All right, so then we've got those. We've got the different barricades as well as the various different dual-sided markers. So we've got graffiti... We've got the looting. And we've got the police markers. So we got the police cubes as well as the riot police vehicles. Then we've got the students, the neighbors, the workers, and the prisoners. Got our dice and other markers as well. Then we've got all the various different districts. We've got all of these. Pop those back in here. Then we've got the player aids for each of the factions. Of course, we've got the rules, but let's fold this back up. Like I said, I'm not sure if it's going to be material like this or if it's going to be something like um like i said like uh mouse pad material so we've got this we've got the mat which you didn't there wasn't a mat before that i can tell you for sure that's something new and we got the rules which clock in i what did i say i believe they were about i thought they were about 20 pages Sure enough, all together, 20 pages. Ah, okay, that doesn't count. Those are just credits. And that is what we find when we take everything from the preview of the second edition of Block by Block outside the box. So as I mentioned before, there is, uh, there's no, I don't, I don't have any pledge info yet as far as pricing. Of course, there's going to be stretch goals and other things as well for Block by Block, the Insurrection game, second edition, from Out of Order Games. I should have, I would think I'll have some info within about the first week of May, because the Kickstarter is going to kick off on May 15th. I can't tell you for sure if it's going to be what the length of the Kickstarter will be either. So, I will have more news about that. What I will do is because now I need to send this back. This is just a preview, right? So this isn't something I'm going to get to hang on to. So I need to send this back. So I am going to uh, do a how to play and quick review of it uh, for next Monday's show. So I'm, I'm familiar with the original edition. It's been quite a while since I played. So I want to see what the difference is between the first and second editions and 
pretty much give you, okay, I'm, I'm not going to say it's going to be a review because it is still kind of like uh, preview components and stuff like that. It's like beta components, but I will give you uh, my overall thoughts on the game and kind of show you how to play. That will be next Monday, so they'll give you plenty of time to check that out and decide if the Kickstarter is something you want to back or not. All right, so that is today's show. A little, little short, kind of quick today. Kind of zipped along pretty well. So as I mentioned, tomorrow, I'm sure tomorrow's show is going to be a bit longer because I'm going to review Thunderstone Quest and all the goodies that are in here. I will point out that uh, I'm just going to kind of review it based on one of the quests. I'm not going to go through all the quests and that because if you checked out the... Uh, preview my unboxing you know my first look at thunderstone quest there's tons of stuff in this monster cube so i'm not going to tear all of it out because you've already seen it or if you haven't seen it just go back and check out my first look all right so when you're not watching the daily dope be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews comics movies tv come on by now you know the drill Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I will be back tomorrow. And until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday. And as always, thank you so much for watching.